Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to fully explain light versus heavy mice. We're going to discuss the pros and cons and basic science behind it all. What is interesting is a trend of going as light as humanly possible, but is it actually good? Remember there are different variables to a great mouse and this video just covers a topic of just weight and we're just the comparison. So obviously things to remember in terms of variables are shape, button click, glide, Teflon placement, wired versus wireless, and much more. So let's start with heavy mice as they're going to follow the very quick timeline of how mice have trended. What is very interesting is that nearly a decade ago, mice actually used to trend towards heavy. The reason? It was thought that having a heavier mice would provide more stability. We would see weights being added to even most mice like Logitech. As years kept passing, we saw laser versus optical sensor, which translated to extremely high DPIs and would mirror these mice to push for performance. The higher DPI is what trended towards a heavier mouse to maintain control. Sometimes you would see advertisements pushing above 16,000 DPI, which is a setting that is quite outlandish. As we kept pushing through time, we saw light trending opposite to going lighter. We saw holes being put into mice to consistently drop the overall weight. But we saw pros go more for consistent DPI, such as 400, 800, and 1,600 DPI, as that's where most mice were most optimal in their settings. Now, the real question is, which is better? I mean, unfortunately, neither. And now let's deep dive into that. We believe there's a, definitely a sweet spot for every user, but remember different variables I mentioned prior will impact performance. You gotta find what's best for you. What should be notated are the pros and cons. Now let's discuss that for light mouse. The pros. It's easier to glide across a mouse pad due to the less weight to start momentum. They tend to be smaller in shape, obviously for requiring a lighter weight, and they can provide potentially better dexterity as you stop and start momentum can be a bit easier due to the weight. And of course, it can be better on your arm and hand on a lower sensitivity due to moving around less weight. Now the cons is that it can be harder for those newer to gaming. I mean, the reason is because those who are getting into gaming need more mouse weight to feel the weight and have more stability. Glide can be too fast or smooth, resulting in also worse mouse control for those that are newcomers. Now for heavier mice, the pros is that it can provide more stopping power and stability due to the weight to help stop momentum. Just remember that the variable of change in surfaces does make an impact. It can also occasionally be larger in size due to the weight. It can also stabilize out at a higher sensitivity, which can also be beneficial. Now for the cons. It can be harder on a lower sensitivity to build momentum to snap between targets. And also a heavier weight can be harder to move on potentially different type of shots depending on the surface. So the surface is obviously a very important variable here. So to notate that this all depends on the user and your goal. For newcomers, a lighter mouse may not be the solution as you're still learning mouse control. But as you become seasoned and discover your best settings, heavier mice might be the biggest variable holding you back. Because there's so many different variables, just as much as physics, we have to remember how physics impact this decision. So let's talk some basic science and explain this even further. The most basic is a friction of the mouse contact with the mouse pad, which is obviously lots on the market. You could talk about the angle, the cut of the, of the mice feet, the location uh, based on the weight distribution of where the weight is going to put the most pressure. And of course, let's go to a, an extreme example. Consider a metallic brick and a metallic table, the friction is going to be much slower and there's going to be massive stopping power because of this weight. This can be great for stability, obviously the object is not going to move and it stays accurate on its current location, but it can be hard to build momentum. Now if we go to the other extreme we discuss, let's say an air hockey table. The puck on the air hockey table will be harder to keep stable on its location. It's going to float around, it's going to move around a bit more, but it's going to provide an immense amount of speed switching between locations. Remember that heavier objects can provide more momentum and speed once they are going, but they can be harder to stop. An object with more mass, which is often referred to as a heavier object, requires more force to set in motion if one neglects friction. Newton's law, or Newton's second law, F equals MA, tells us that force required to produce a given acceleration is proportional to the mass of the object. Thus, an object with more mass must be acted upon by more force to accelerate it at the same amount as the object with less mass. 
So when friction is a factor, the force must be applied to an object is equal to the force of the friction opposing the motion. So we use air table versus metallic table. Now compare this to the less extremes. Let's go back again to mice of slow versus faster mouse pads. If the friction producing surface is the same for both objects, meaning the same mouse pad, a heavier object still requires more force to be set in motion, right? Science. The force of friction of an object being pushed across a flat surface is equal to the weight of the object times the coefficient of friction of the surface in contact with the object. It's possible that a heavier object can be moved with less force than a lighter object if the heavier object is being moved across a different surface with way less friction, or depending on the friction type. Again, we go back to metallic table, air table. So remember that you can have a mouse pad that can definitely support your heavier mouse. So it's not a one size fits all. So this can be a very difficult video to, to put together. We can talk a G Pro wireless on an artisan mouse pad, or we can talk a G502, which is a heavier mouse on a GSR, which is arguably a slower mouse pad. Definitely stops the momentum, right? Two extremes. It's why I put together the super light G Pro, and you saw in this video, between the G Pro wireless, and even though the shape is the same, but the weight of 20 grams does make a difference. Again, I hope this video is helpful for those looking for your mouse. You kind of understand the journey, the science, and that even though you buy a lighter mouse or a heavier mouse, that the surface does impact. The Teflon on the bottom of the feet does impact. Wired versus, wi wired versus wireless does make an impact. So it doesn't necessarily is going to make you a better aimer. The biggest thing obviously you need to focus on is that you aim train, you hop in game. Go hop in game consistently. Figure out what's comfortable for you. Change your, mi your mouse grip style. Perhaps you need to practice more on small movements. Maybe to raise your sensitivity. Maybe you need to lower it. All these coefficients can help what you can call dial in on a certain specific glider feel that you're most comfortable with. Again, don't forget to leave a like and comment and subscribe. And I'll see you guys all next time.